So we decided to do a little bit of a new format for our Q&A. One of the practitioners for the first half hour sharing something. Last week, Carrie shared recipes, which were amazing. Um, all the replay can be found in our group. And then this week, I'm going to go over a bit of meditation. So if you have a prop and you want to go to the floor, then just get to a comfortable place and just make sure that your hip bones are propped up above your knees. And you can also do this in a chair. Um, that's perfectly wonderful. And so going into a little bit of alignment, just see if you can find your two sits bones. And most of us have 10, 20, 30, 40% more weight on one sits bone or the other. And the sits bones are our foundation for our alignment. And that's going to affect all the way up through the spine, through the neck, through the shoulders. So just see if you can tune into that area in your body. It definitely helps if you're on a harder surface and you can actually get that feedback. And then begin lengthening through your spine, growing nice and tall and long which is actually really supportive of the muscles along our spine, but also really supportive of our organs, our digestive organs. And then your two collar bones. See if you can begin imagining that they're spreading wide, spreading away from each other. You can have your palms facing up. And so there's that opening, broadening happening in the front of the chest and see if you can get an external rotation of your arms. Draw your two fronts of your ribs towards each other, towards the earth, and towards the space behind you. Good, so maybe you're noticing a little bit more of an opening. Hi Carrie, welcome. We're just tuning into our foundation. And so we have equal weight in our sits bones. Our sacrum skin is reaching up towards the ceiling, yet our buttocks muscles are reaching down towards the earth. And those two opposing actions are going to create strength. And if you're not totally sure what I mean, just play around, imagine. It's a subtle movement. So the fingers are spread wide. We're extending through all of those. And then the very southern tips of your scapulas, these bones in the, your back shoulder, those are reaching to the space in front of you, reaching towards the wall in front of you. And then we have those front ribs reaching towards each other and towards the space behind you. And what you'll notice is that these opposing actions are really strengthening. And they can be, even though it looks like you're not doing much, it can be really challenging. So keep lengthening your side waists, extending the spine long, and then reaching out the center top of your head. And then just go ahead, close your eyes, soften the face, and we're lifting from the armpit chest up towards the ceiling, the top shoulders releasing towards the earth. Your heart is lifting upwards and forwards at a 60 degree angle. And you'll feel toning in new ways throughout the body. And then just notice if your chin is upwards towards the sky or if your chin is downwards towards your heart, bring it to neutral. And this will allow you to get deeper into your meditation. So those eyes are softening. Heart is lifting, spine is lengthening. And then see if you can just pay attention to the area at the tip of your nose. See if you can feel any breath coming in or out.
smooth, soft inhalation through your nose, smooth, soft exhalation out through your nose. And keep your focus, a laser focus, just on the tip of the nose to the tip of the top lip. It's that little area, that little triangulation area. And just bring your attention to your observations in that small area. Do you notice warm air coming in? Cool air leaving? And just keep coming to your breath. Good. So that was just a really brief introduction to Anapana meditation, where you're focusing on that small region at the nose just observing the sensations, um, whether it's hot or cool or tingling or no sensation, but bringing that laser focus is really amazing for clearing the mind and getting into deeper meditation. And then I wanna focus a little bit more on our structure today and our alignment to so see if you can really roll on the inside edges of your sits bones Roll on the front edges of your sits bones. Lengthen the spine. And then if you're able, whether you're seated or you're in the position that I am, if you're seated on your chair, just ground both feet equally, getting equal pressure in those feet and extend the arms forward. And we're releasing from the outside edges of our scapulas towards our pinky fingers, towards our fingers. That's opening up the back shoulders, opening up the neck. You can bring all the fingers towards each other and lengthen them. And then inhale, work really slowly and symmetrically. It's actually more difficult the slower you go. Trying to keep those wrists parallel to each other in alignment with each other. Bringing the hands overhead. Smooth breathing. Again, the tendency here is for the ribs to splay out forward, draw them towards each other and towards the space behind you. It's really going to tone and activate your core. And this is deeper shoulder work. And oftentimes, the emotion that gets stored in our shoulders is anger. So sometimes when you do deep shoulder work, sometimes you just have to go on a walk afterwards and <laughs> Release and let that go. So we're just moving the lip in this area, opening up those shoulders. And the arms will get tired. Just focus on your breath. Smooth inhalation and exhalation. And then we're gonna move slowly and symmetrically again. Palms are facing up towards the ceiling. And you're slowly bringing the arms down symmetrically. Extending and lengthening through the fingers. See if you can engage underneath your arm, bringing that muscle, activating it, bringing it towards the bone. And you're still getting an external rotation of your arms. So your thumbs are reaching down and back behind you. If you're hitchhiking, reaching them back. See if you can engage those arms a little bit more. And those southern tips of your scapulas are drawing towards the front of the room. Lengthening your side waists. So this meditation form is really just tuning into the different physical sensations in our body, becoming more and more aware of our body. And then we'll work slowly again. Bringing those arms straight up, 
smooth inhalation. The hips, the glutes are engaged, they're working strong, they're active. The face, the throat, the skin is soft. Get a little bit taller and then exhale, working slowly, symmetrically, bringing those arms down. Releasing from the scapulas towards the fingers. Smooth breathing. Again, see if you can engage underneath the arm. So this one is meant to open up the back and the neck and the shoulders. Again, warming up that area. And then exhale, palms coming down. Good. So for this next one, um, again, if you have a little cushion or something, um, even like a couch cushion, just go ahead and grab it and make your way to a space on the floor. Good. So we're getting up on a prop and taking that left leg forward, that left leg straight and bending that right knee. And then we really want to work with our spines whenever we're working with yoga or meditation. So if you press through this mound of the big toe, that's where we start to activate our spines from. So extend the toes wide, press through the mounds of the big toes. Your kneecap is engaging, so it's lifting up the leg. It's not hyperextending, but it's engaging so that we can activate and strengthen that leg. Good, and so the arms come up again, smooth inhalation. This one's also amazing for digestion. And just see if you can spread all of those toes wide, press through the mounds of the big toes. And then exhale, you'll take that right hand, reaching it towards that left foot, or the outside of the left ankle. working with the neck and the shoulders and the pelvis. So you're getting an external rotation of this right arm, internal rotation of your left leg. And press through the mounds with the big toes. So you can start activating the spine. Again, smooth rhythmic breathing through your nose. This is a gentle twist and twists are amazing for creating flexibility in the body because it's breaking up some of that lymphatic waste. It's gently cleansing those organs and toning them. Keep extending through the toes and then inhale, come up, bringing the arms up. Find the mounds of your big toes, find your two inner sits bones. Exhale, take the arms down and switch. Good, inhaling those arms up. Spread all the toes wide, press through that mound of the big toe. Lift your kneecap so it's engaging up your thigh. And then exhale, take your left arm to the outside of your right leg or foot. Gentle twist. The belly button is twisting towards the right. Again, you're getting an external rotation of this left arm to work with the neck and the shoulders. And as you engage and press through those mounds of the big toes, you start to access that spine. Roll onto the inside edges of your sits bones, the front edges of your sits bones. Feel 
your right groin is releasing towards the earth. And inhale, coming on up. Good. So for this next one, you'll just want your bolster again. Um, you might even need extra props. I'll often put another blanket or a prop. And the reason is, is that most of us have our knees up above our hips, which is training us to be tight in the pelvis. And we don't want to grip there because that actually grips our reproductive organs, it grips our groins. And so as soon as you grab extra height, pop yourself on as many pillows as you need. I often have people in class who have a tower going. Um, and that's how we're going to start getting that pelvis open. So get enough height to where your hips are above your knees. And then we're opening in these front groins, releasing the groins towards the knees. And then we're toning in our hips and our buttocks region. Go ahead and open your feet like a book. Good. And so as the front groins are opening wide, releasing towards the inner knees, the outside knees are releasing, chasing up towards the outer hips. So engage those outer hips, engage the glutes. You might even feel a little bit of percolating or shaking. That's good, we're just opening up the nervous system, making those neural pathways to new parts of the body. And if you ever do experience that percolating or that shaking, that's an indication that the nervous system is needing support so that's when we know to really support those adrenal glands. This is one of my favorite forms of yoga to get into deep nervous system restoration and strengthening and healing. So keep that pressure of your feet together. Engage those hips. Engage the muscles around your hips. Glutes are strong. And yet the front pelvis is opening, releasing. So again, we're always working with opposing actions, front body opening, back body contracting. See if you can lengthen your side waist equally. Again, getting this external rotation of your arms. Palms can be facing up. And then this armpit chest, often this is where sadness or depression or lack of self-worth resides. And so we're opening this region up. We're developing these muscles. We're lifting that armpit chest up towards the ceiling and rolling the top shoulders down towards the earth. And it's amazing to see people's confidence levels and self-worth levels shift just by a body posture. So those southern tips of your scapulas again are reaching towards the front of the room. Collarbones again are spreading wide. Smooth with your breathing. But up glutes muscles are chasing towards the earth. And that sacrum scan is reaching up towards the ceiling. And it's okay if you can find these actions or if you can't find them, we're really just in ex exploration mode. And it just takes practice. Okay, exhale, relax the body, relax the hips. Use your hands to draw those knees together. So maybe when you first started your yoga journey, maybe it was hard for you to spread your toes wide. And maybe now after practice, you can get it so it's the same thing. We're just building these neural pathways of awareness into our body. And it's basically meditation and movement. And these are things that you can do at any point, whether you're at the grocery store waiting in line. It's just bringing more awareness into your body. So we'll start with pressing through the mounds of the big toes, coming to standing. This will be the last pose. 
So pressing through the mount of your big toe again. Go ahead and bend your knees. Get this internal rotation of your thighs. Press through your inner heels. Extend the toes long. And then again, we're lifting these kneecaps up the legs to engage the thighs. Buttocks are drawing down towards the earth. Tailbone is releasing towards the earth. And your spine is extending nice and tall, nice and long. See if you can find an internal rotation of your thighs. Good, palms facing out. And so this is mountain pose. You're just being as strong as possible, as stable as possible. Another really good pose for toning the nervous system. And then take your feet, pigeon toe. Take your feet a, few, a couple feet wide, a few feet wide, and get that internal rotation. Elbow descending towards the earth. And again, kneecaps are lifting. And just see if you can find that strength. So while the body is toning, the mind is soft. The face is soft. Good, beautiful. Bringing the feet back together. And coming just for our final seated meditation. Hope you've enjoyed a few of those points. You know, it's a big difference by incorporating those. And so coming to your comfortable position, palms can be facing up. Just go ahead and allow those eyes to close. Focusing on your breath. Breathing in and out of your nose. And again, the, the Native Americans would always say that the sits bones were their connection to the earth. So tune into those sits bones. See if you can roll on the inside edges of their, your sits bones. See if you can lengthen your spine. Growing longer, growing taller. If you can focus on 10 breaths, five inhalations, five exhalations. See if you can make your inhalation equal to your exhalation. Maybe it's a five second inhalation, five second exhalation, or whatever feels natural to you. One wanders, just bring it back to your breath. All right, and thank you so much for that practice. Namaste. Curious to hear any feedback if anyone's experiences or if you've done something similar to that before or different, um, but even maybe a, a story of how meditation has impacted you. Just would love to open it up to the group. Thank you. That felt great. Nice to stretch and open and. Yeah, I think for me, I'm at a point where um, the body is the part lagging behind some of my own shifts in my ability to perceive energy and subtle ways of knowing. So 
opening the body, integrating, embodying um, in a way that feels more holistic is top of mind for me this month in particular, working through this 30 day transformation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I feel so much memory and intelligence is stored in our body motion and um, even in some of these poses that are get hard people start to first come out of the mind but it's more difficult mentally than it does physically oftentimes and definitely a lot for you know, a 30 day transformation that can sometimes be challenging as well as you know oftentimes pressed emotions are coming to the surface and releasing to be healed which is one of my favorite parts, but sometimes it's difficult, it's challenging. Um, so I find meditation or journaling um, to be helpful in that. Anyone? Anyone else want to share or follow up with those? I can share. Mm -hmm. This is Terry. Can you hear me? Hi, Terry. Hi. I just want to say, um, yeah, I agree with you and Michelle that right now um, with consciousness expanding at the rate it's expanding um, the difficult piece for me is keeping up with the body and i've really enjoyed this 30-day um, transformation reset process because it's really put a focus on my body and just the meditations and you know cooking more um, healthily going back to the earth just seems all so vital right now for us to be able to really stay on this planet and, and lift ourselves up with the planet. So thank you. Oh, that's beautiful, Terry. Thank you. I love that. I totally agree. I think there's been a, there is a tendency, you know, even with stress in our lives day to day for us to exit our bodies or not be fully embodied. So cooking is a great way just being in tune with the colors, the sensations, the smells, to really bring us back into our bodies. Ultimately, I feel like that helps us find more joy. And yeah, I love that feedback, beautiful. Thank you. Great reflection. Awesome. So I just wanna open it up to, you know, continuing on this topic and conversation or opening it up to any questions that people are experiencing um, in your 30 day um, or any comments, anything that you've noticed that has changed, anything that's different. I have a question. So, um, actually, Terry, thank you. I've been eating more melon the last couple of days since we, we talked on Sunday, so I'm doing better. Um, but if we can't, like I've been doing cantaloupe and watermelon, but if we can't get that, what's a good substitute like cucumbers? Is that a good one? Exactly. Yeah. I love cucumbers. Those are kind of all in the melon type and very hydrating. Because that's, they're, they're usually pretty uh, available. So that, that's a good one. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else? I mean, the grapes have actually been pretty good right now and those are super hydrating as well. So I would just go for whatever looks fresh um, in your store at your farmer's market. I definitely look for those high water content foods, but also what your body's drawn to naturally. Are pomegranates okay? Yeah, they're great. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I love palm. I just wasn't sure if they, they were too sweet, but. Nope, they're wonderful. They actually have some astringent properties as well. Um, great fall time. Oh, perfect. What about um, dark reds, frozen sweet cherries? Oh, that's my absolute favorite. <laughs> they're really good and they just kind of melt in your mouth if you eat them frozen. Um, and it can make me pretty happy, but I didn't know if they're too sweet either. So, good. Yeah. I think of the sweet fruits as like the bananas and the dates primarily. And I have a minimal amount of those. You know, it's different for each person. I'm often not craving that. Those are much more rebuilding, deeply nourishing foods. Um, they're not so much cleansing. So I just do minimal amount of those. And then I really have as much 
of the other fresh fruits as possible, including the cherries and all of it. And the cherries are wonderful for kidney filtration. Um, one of the top sources for that. Good. <laughs> One of the questions I have is about what's in the cleanse um, tablets and are they designed to kind of help move the system along? Are they, they have sort of a, a gut motility factor to them or should we be adding something in addition? I guess I'm into day three of the 10 days in the middle and so I'm kind of trying to regulate with some magnesium and some of that kind of stuff. So just checking on the everybody your experience with that and kind of what you recommend yeah beautiful so those they're an amazing formulation the super cleanse are they have both like antibacterial, antibacterial antifungal in it, as well as herbs that help you to move your bowels get on something that's dying off your body which is important so if you're fine you're having lots of movement Reduce the capsules, you know, by a little bit, reduce it to down to like one or two um, a day. And then if you're experience, if you're not experiencing enough bowel movements, really increase your fruits and hydrating foods um, and your magnesium and your sleep and your rest. And, um, yeah, it's kind of different per person because oftentimes there's an adrenal component and a hard time having a bowel movement. So. It just, yeah, it just depends. And then exercise is an important component for people that are having a hard time getting their bowels moving. But during that middle 10 days, you're, you're in restore mode. You're resting a little bit more. Oops, I think you're on mute. You know, my internet's unstable, so I took my picture off just because you were cutting in and out, but I, um, appreciate that and it feels I haven't been really hungry and I haven't had any headaches or any physical distress so I think the pre you know the first for me 14 felt like it had enough of a clearing that there isn't a lot of detoxing in a, in a discomfort that seems to have already been more mild in the beginning stage so I'll just kind of keep playing and um, see where I land but adding the fruit, I know I'm appreciating the, the three flex foods and kind of trying to shift between some fruit, some of the milk, some of the, uh, you know, vegetables and just so I feel satiated just in warming up, you know, some of that stuff. So adding the fruit um, can help with the keeping things moving. So be mindful of that too. On the flex meal chart, um, we really do in this group in particular open it up to all fresh fruits and veggies, especially seasonal. Um, and your fruits are your hydration, your cellular hydration, and your cellular energy. And it takes so much energy to heal and to get into deeper cleansing and to eliminate any wastes or damaged tissues or damaged cells. That takes energy. So. That's why we recommend um, the fruits is because you're going to get the most healing and cleansing at the deepest level um, and energy to your cells level through the fruits. Um, however, if you are cleansing too much, if you're having too many detox symptoms and you need to slow it down a little bit, that's when those steamed veggies come in. That's going to slow or stop the cleansing to a degree. So, you know, you get to be in charge. You get to put on the gas, dive deeper, dig, dig into the fruits, you get to slow it down, focus more on rebuilding and nourishing with the veggies. So finding that balance for you, it's a little bit different per person depending on what you're working on. People that are working on nervous system healing are working high in the fruits. People that are working on bone and connective tissue are working deeper, um, incorporating more veggies. But finding that that beautiful balance for yourself. And having fun. Yeah. 
Has anyone been experiencing um, new insights? Like, has anyone been journaling throughout your process? Um, or even having detox symptoms? Anything like that? Happy to talk, touch on those subjects as well. What I noticed today is resistance, releasing resistance. I think I just started my like day 11 of this and as it's cleansing my body, re the resistance between the cells is being reduced. Mm -hmm. But then today I had several conversations about my resistance to my new career, my resistance to this, my resistance to that. So it's starting to show up in my life as well, that reduction of re resistance. Oh my gosh, beautiful. I love that you've noticed, <laughs> noticed that. Um, that's actually something that I hear often. And I love that that's what you're experiencing. In my own experience, what I noticed was as I had a lot more congestion in my body, which again is multi-generational, I had a lot more roadblocks. And then as soon as I got deeper and deeper and deeper into my lymphatic cleansing and getting more cellularly hydrated, I just felt like it was a green light, like so many opportunities and experiences just opened. Um, and I love that work where we're just like working internally and then having that reflected externally in our experiences. So thanks for speaking to that. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's a good word, uh, resisting. That's uh, kind of how I've been feeling too. I've, um, you know, I joined the group on Sunday and, and I was just having a hard time, uh, you know, eating some things that, you know, they weren't necessarily really bad, but they weren't, you know, in the deep cleanse. And, and uh, but the, the perspective was, well, you know, I was kind of beating myself up, but I was feeling then I took a look and said, well, I haven't done dairy, I haven't done uh, meat, and I haven't done gluten, you know, for three weeks. So that's pretty good. That's um, and that's actually part, that's been pretty easy, but there's like, you know, my, my rice chips and chocolate, you know, the, and, and it's not been a lot of sugar, it's just been a little bit, but still it's, it's sugar. And, and, uh, and Carrie helped me kind of put it in perspective and, the last several days, I, I haven't been worried about trying to take that stuff out, but I've been adding more fruit and just making that my goal to get more fruit. And, and that's been helping a lot. So Great. I'll get there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, I think celebrating the wins are so huge and important because it becomes fun and rewarding and joyful. And you really get to acknowledge yourself for, for how far you've come. Whereas if we get hard on ourselves, kind of nitpicking all the little things, it can take the joy right out of the process. So I think um, you're doing amazing. And as you continue to incorporate those fruits, um, those other patterns do just naturally start to fall away. And we have talked about before how, you know, that craving for the chocolate can just be a reflection of the adrenals. And it sounds like you're doing a lot of strong work to heal that. Um, and adrenals take time. So just have patience with yourself and keep nourishing yourself in all those amazing ways. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's I, I've had problems with the adrenal for you know decades, so it's not going to happen overnight. Right. Yeah, you're not alone. Um, I had like chronic nervous system and adrenal kind of failure, um, and it took me a couple of years to really turn that around. Um, and it does, it takes time. You know, oftentimes we've worked ourselves into these patterns because they've been passed down for multiple generations. So giving yourself that patience and your time and just knowing what nurtures that, and that's primarily your fruits. And also, you know, the herbs that are in the super love meal are the top adrenal herbs, as well as the be energetic really is supportive to the adrenals. And then just all of the alkaline nutrients and remineralization that we're getting from the soil health, that all goes and reflects back to adrenal health. So just be patient with yourself and know that you're getting there and doing it. It's just layer by layer. Yeah, uh, I am taking the Be Energetic. Uh, Carrie recommended that. 
And I think, definitely think that's helping. And uh, I started doing yoga about a year ago and noticed that kind of helped me get to, you know, a different level, which was good. Yeah, it does. And anytime you're working with nervous system or adrenal health, if you can get restorative yoga in, you know, either yin or some of like what we were doing today, that actually strengthens that nervous system. So it's a powerful combination. I found the yoga alone is amazing, but not the full piece. The nutrition is amazing. But again, when you add the two together, it's powerful. It's beautiful. You kind of start to tune into what's possible with our nervous system. Um, yeah, that's avatar qualities. Really affect the nervous system. <laughs> yeah, it's been awesome. Thank you. I love it. Um, feel free anyone to share reflections or jump in this time is really for you um, observations something that struck you this week something that you're working through um, really anything You know, one thing I've noticed is that there's a sense for me of any place in my life that I have a scarcity. Like so that's an interesting thing. I've never thought of myself as being into food, having food in um, But it's like there, it's buried down in there somewhere. And if there's a sense of being hungry or a sense of choosing not, or I don't know, like there's a long-term um, benefit or plan or you know versus this sort of immediate gratification uh, sense of not enough uh, scarcity so it's brought that up in a variety I mean I'm just where it's tied whether it's time or you know, whatever it is it's an underlying so I'm just working with that I'm just letting it arise in my awareness but it's been interesting to watch the connection mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Has anyone else noticed similar things? I can definitely relate to that. Even just taking pauses, which we're, we're doing during this transformation, we're taking a pause on inputting a lot of stimulants, a lot of things that actually suppress our emotions. Um, and so that's why so much does come to the surface because we're energizing cells, which means they're going to, they're going to let go. Um, and so it's amazing what comes up and, you know, it's something, it's things that all of us can relate to at a universal level. Um, and oftentimes it's even things that are from childhood or that we didn't realize that we were coming around. Um, and maybe that we're acting, acting from being aware of it. So it's so beautiful to tune into these subtleties and basically have a full vibrational upgrade, which is, you know, as you start to change the frequency and the health and the vibrancy of the cells, you also start to change your behaviors and your habits and your patterns and your emotions. So beautiful. I'm starting to see the shift from the the energy, the high vibrational infusions of energy, working on detoxing, to the shift to the high vibrations of frequency, energizing or expanding. So there's a subtle difference. I mean, along with that piece of it, there's been some ideas about my own work in the world and expanding it and moving into a, a, a higher level of trust and surrender, not on any scarcity or lack or even in I would say planning or you know like over um, uh, clinging to processes that are no longer necessary so more live teaching for instance or more live webinars or more just being willing to be in the moment with what's trending versus feeling I need a structure for a class kind of thing that's an example 
Uh, and so it's, it's, there's a liberation and a freedom that's coming on multiple levels. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, quite an opening even of our creativity um, or showing up in the world. Are you finding more, more clarity as well in the ways that you want to show up? In my own resistance, I think Vern was someone saying, you know, I can feel it. I'm like, well, that seems pretty scary to be that ass hanging out the window-ish, you know, <laughs> with my own <laughs> community. So it's been it's just to notice, you know, and nothing needs to happen tomorrow. There's a real sense of spaciousness around the time of integration, but it's been fun to, you know, feel myself uh, arguing with myself about what's possible. Thank you. you. Yeah, I, I, I love that. That's great. And uh, I was kind of in that attitude. It's just like, well, you know, I'm on this timeline and I'm not getting there. And it's just like, well, wait a minute. I don't need to be in a rush. And, you know, this is, you know, th I'm, I'm doing this for a long time. And uh, so I'm just going to keep working on it and keep trying. And so it's, it's kind of, it's liberating to just have that attitude. It's just like, okay, I don't need to be anywhere at any certain time. As long as I'm making progress, then that's what counts, so. Proud of you. Yeah, 100% agree. And every single step you take will just take you further in that direction of healing and opening and new awareness. And so, again, I love that you're not attached to a specific timeline, but more to where you're headed in that journey. Nice. Yeah. Love it. Are there any topics that you have found interesting throughout this cleanse or anything that you've read that is new information to you that you never heard before um, or something that you're working on integrating? Vibrational frequencies of food. That is something I, I was never heard, I, you know, and I've, I've done a lot of research over the last you know, a couple decades. And it's, it's always interesting when you run into something new, it's just like, oh, hey, I've never heard about that before. Can you explain that a little bit more in depth? Yes, I can. I Thank actually you. love this subject. Um, and it was really eye opening to me when I learned it as well. I learned it through Dr. Robert Morse in our training. Um, he has an angstrom's chart, a measurement and angstrom's is basically energetic frequency. And so um, you know, fruits definitely have the highest measurement of angstroms and then our nervous system, you know, our brain and nervous system also has the highest measurement of angstroms. And so that's why there's such medicine for each other is they actually match up at a frequency energetic level because the brain and nervous system needs that fuel, that energy to be really healthy. And then the next level is veggies. Um, and I think they're like at around 12,000 units of angstrom, maybe less. I'm kind of forgetting it's been a while since I've reviewed this, but I feel like fruits are like 12 to 16 and then um, veggies are the next step below, you know, about like six to seven. If fruits are at 12, they're at that next step. And then as you go um, down even lower, then you start getting into, you know, like the animal products and the dairy and um, meat cooked meat is actually at zero angstroms, which I thought was really interesting. And just a smile, we need 7,000 angstroms of energy. So I don't know if you've, if you've noticed this throughout your process, but um, when I've eaten, you know, foods that don't really have much energetic value, it's hard to even smile or have the energy for other people. And then when, I'm, when I've eaten foods that are like super high energy, super high frequency, I have so much to give and I can't help but smile. Um, so, you know, I really played with that in depth over the years and just noticed the difference dramatically. So yeah, fruits are at the highest, then veggies, then you get into your animal products along with the cooked foods. Um, and so you can just, really it's at that, that cellular health level. 
Um, and then the average ca cancer patient has about 4,700 units of angstrom. So we do, you know, to, to get the cell taxing, we actually have to get above that level. Um, so that cellular repair can actually happen. Cool, thank you. Yeah, it's, I, I've been trying to do a little research on it and it's mm -hmm. just, it's, I can you know, never thought of food as having frequency. Yeah, I'll put a chart in the group that has a specific exact number is what I was referencing tonight. Um, and that's really helpful. Thank you. Has anyone noticed that they've gotten more sensitive or more in tune, um, either with intuition or their surroundings or emotions? Just curious about that. I just had somebody reach out to me. She's not on this call. I wish she was, but her and her husband are both going through some really deep and dark emotions that are coming to the surface. And she, her actual verbatim words is now I know why this call this, they call this trends a total transformation or an ultimate transformation because the emotional body for them, she said, I'm experiencing trauma servicing in my body that needs to be healed. Things that are no longer serving me are crumbling for both my husband and I We're going through a crazy personal dark night um, of the soul. I wonder if this is common was her question. I said, uh-huh, <laughs> super common. Um, so if you're processing, you know, and that was what we kind of talked about, Vern, I got to pop off. So I have to teach yoga in three minutes. Um, but it, it, this is kind of what we talked about um, on Sunday a little bit, like notice if some of your food patterns are, you know, because you're trying to suppress emotion that's rising. Um, because it's always better out than in, you're going to come out a much more beautiful person on the other side with a lot less trauma and wounds and all of that just because you're letting it come out and heal so um Rita I'll let you take that over we just got into like a deep subject right at the end there <laughs> yeah thanks for bringing that up Carrie one of my favorite subjects love you thanks for popping on um have a good yoga class so this is common and I've also experienced it um at so many various levels and so again as we're getting those cells energized and alkaline, they're releasing A, toxins, um, you know, lymphatic congestion, which shows up as physical pain. Anywhere we've had an injury, anywhere that there's genetic weakness, anywhere that um, toxins have been stored, old injuries, that's where you're gonna feel those pain symptoms come up because it has to be released before the body will heal, heal it. At the same time, we're going to have emotions come up. Um, and again, it can be anything, you know, off, I've had things come up that I didn't even know were there, you know? Um, so it can kind of come out of left field and it can be hard. And so what I really love to share is a simple meditation. And I'd say this is what I use the most to get through those really challenging trauma cellular releases cellular memory releases and it's i've shared it before but i'll share it again it's it's just i forgive you i love you i'm sorry i thank you and then you're doing that outward but you're also doing that inwards i forgive myself i love myself i'm sorry and i thank you and so just having a mantra and a meditation of forgiveness, of love, of compassion, of gratitude for all of the experiences, it actually helps to move through it so that we don't have to get sucked into whatever the story may be, whatever the experience was. We can acknowledge it as it comes to the surface. We can process all of those emotions. We can release, we can cry, we can let go, we can laugh, whatever we need to do. Um, but that mantra really helps you to release without getting tied back into that story, that trauma, that emotion. Um, so yeah, let it come up. 
I love to nourish and like get outside, lay on the earth because the earth is so nurturing and non-judgmental. The earth just like holds you, you know? So even if it's your backyard or under a tree, if you can get, take off your shoes, you know, and, and actually get your skin on the earth, um, it's going to help you process um, those emotions. And remember, it is a good thing that it's coming up. Um, don't feel the need to suppress it. Allow it to really release because that's where its full healing cycle is going to be. Um, and then if, you know, if it's super doubt challenging, um, it's really amazing to, you know, get into the meditation, get into kinesthetics, work with a professional if you need to, if you need help moving through that. Um, which is sometimes needed for sure. So, but those are a few tips, you know, even just taking an Epsom salt bath, um, essential oils, um, reading a good book, you know, whatever it may be, just, um, or just sitting there, sitting in meditation and allowing it to release. Because as Carrie said, so much better out than in. And it's a true deep healing process once we release those emotions um, that had been stored. I mean, it's crazy. Like oftentimes we have no idea what is stored in us, um, both at the toxicity level, which is multi-generational and both at the emotional level, which is multi-generational. So what comes out, oftentimes you're healing for multiple generations. It could be a pattern that, it could, that existed. Um, you know, or in either of your parents' line. So if it's deep, if it's challenging, love yourself, nourish yourself, reach out if you need help. Um, but that is the healing process and it's a necessary part of the process. I just want to add in, um, you know, Terry and I both are breath workers and breath work is really good to use. I'm, I mean, that's what's getting me through this cleanse. I do a session every morning. And actually on Instagram, a friend in England, it's called Breath Pod. He does a guided one every morning. And so though we're here in the US, you can just go to Breath, Breath Pod's site and, and just do it there. I love that, thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Can I ask a question? So I'm on, I'm Lauren, <laughs> and I'm on day 12, um, which is day, started Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I'm, I'm finishing my third day of the super cleanse. And I take about four of the amino acids in the morning. I take two of the biomedic, um, two of the super cleanse, and like the quarter cup of the... Um, of the powder and um, and like put frozen fruit and whatever. And pretty much I've been living off of the three shakes. I'm really, I just, I know my gut is off and I'm really trying to do this to just heal my gut up. Um, but I was getting indigestion and I think Carrie sent a thing to me like don't mix um, fruit and veg because i the day i got really bad heartburn i had thrown in edamame mm -hmm. um just because i was really hungry that day <laughs> and i got such bad so now i'm just back to fruit again and today i've been okay mm -hmm. uh, um but <clears throat> I, I i didn't know like i don't um the biomedic um i only take two in the morning right am i supposed to do more than that two is great i do i prefer two in the morning as well um because that will just it'll be really effective and um making sure that you're getting the bowel movements as well so i would stick to two and then you know the indigestion oftentimes there's like a deeper genetic thing happening there and that takes time doing what you're doing is going to start restoring the pancreas, which is what breaks down the enzyme or produces the enzyme and such. So I would just keep simplifying like you are, until, you know, and then your body is going to get to those deeper and deeper levels of healing. And then eventually you will be able to 
eat what you want to eat, you know, but to get into those deep um, healing levels, it's nice to just simplify for right now. So you think that the indigestion or the heartburn was, um, was some sort of pancreatic working its way through? I think it, it was probably related to the, the, um, the food combination. But if our digestive process is really strong and your pancreas is really strong, it's not going to impact us as much. Whereas if we do have those um, areas that we're working on, then when you do those, those food combinations, you'll feel those experiences like heartburn and indigestion. Um, and then also just, you know, you're going to rebalancing so that you're producing enough natural hydrochloric acid, so you're digesting enough. There's a lot of processes in there, but in the end, we're just focusing on healing. You're focusing on healing your digestion. So then the last piece is um, I, I, the super cleanse. I do two in the morning, and then I have one at lunch and one at dinner. I've just been breaking those up. And then when I finish the 10 day Wednesday, I can add a meal back in, right? Like a lunch or something. Add what back in? I can add one meal back in, like cook food. Yeah. yeah. So it's whatever you want to do and get out of it. You might decide that you want to keep going or you might decide that you're ready to incorporate um, other, you know, that other meal in. Um, just make sure that right now you're getting enough nourishment, enough calories. Um, you don't ever want to restrict anyway. Um, and then as you do incorporate other things that you haven't been, just see how your body responds. Um, so a little confused when you said, um, you said add more nourishing foods on other than the three, like I put banana and frozen, I put banana, frozen, um, sorry, um, blueberries and strawberries and cherries or whatever in my smoothie. Is there something else I should be doing? Well, if, if you need more day, like more snacks, then you're welcome to incorporate those. If you're feeling satisfied and nourished, then you don't need to. But, you know, fruits and veggies don't have a lot of calories, so it's okay to eat every couple of hours um, and really balance out that metabolism. So I'm only getting your uh, every other word. That's why I, I'm trying to have you. I think what you're saying is like I could add in, I think it just has to be an hour away from the fruits, but I could have a salad or something, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. But try not to cook the veggies unless I have to. Can I put like olive oil and some lemon and whatever on the salad with it? Or you'd rather no olive oil right now? I, I mean, it's up to you if you want to go then I would avocado olive oil and with your lemon but again you're doing amazing you don't want to get too strict like deepest healing properties then I would just do kind of minimal of the fats until your digestion really resets okay but, yeah, whatever it feels nourishing at this time. okay thank you I, I, I and I hopefully I'll, I'll contact Terry later and maybe she caught your every other word I missed <laughs> Sorry, it might be my internet. I do live in the mountain. <laughs> well, so I have a question now based on what Lauren asked. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes? Okay, this is Terry. Um, ideally, if you can handle it, you should be taking two biomedic twice a day, correct? You were saying, she was saying she was just doing it once a day, but I do it in the morning with my power shake and then I also do it mid afternoon or with dinner. So t for a day, correct? Um, it's, I say it's different per person. The recommended dosage is for a day. I do two a day because I often find that it stirs and pulls so much congestion out that it can be constipating to some people. So if you're experiencing any constipation, cut it down to two a day. If you're having great bowel movements and you're doing good on the four a day, then keep it there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for being here. Appreciate you all. Thanks for sharing um, your reflections, what you're learning. 
doing, what you're experiencing. I think we really all learn from each other. Um, and that's why I love these little pods, these little meetings. So um, yeah, feel free to reach out to us if you have any more questions. And I look forward to next week and hearing more of your questions and um, breakthroughs or wherever you're at. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.